Hi, uh, it's me, Miguel Madeil, uh, one of the co-directors of Don't Feed These Animals. And today we'll be showing some of the sculpting and modeling techniques in Cinema 4D with Rafael and João. And myself, as the Look Dev director, I'll also be showing you guys some of the cool aspects of working with hair in C4D. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is João Batista. I'm a 3D artist here at Nebula Studios. Cinema 4D modeling and sculpting modules are one of the, its best key features in my opinion. They were very useful at the start of the project. For the sculpting, we had the opportunity to use some of the best Wacom technologies. The tablet is really useful for me. It allows me to give more uh, human feel to the work. It's faster, it's more precise, it's better in every term. During this project, one of the characters, which is a fish, was entirely made in Cinema 4D. This was possible because Cinema 4D has the whole set of tools we need to build a character from scratch into something that's ready to animate. And in the end, the fish was done. Hi, my name is Rafael Souza and I'm a CG journalist. In the project Don't Feed These Animals, I'm responsible for modeling the sets and the props, as well as assisting in rigging and shading. Accepting this role has been both rewarding as well as a bit challenging because being able to translate the concepts from Flip and Wanchana has been taking a long and substantial time. Luckily, using Cinema 4D as our main 3D tool helped to shorten that period. Its MoGraph modules helped the quick distribution of objects through the scene as well as adding variation in size, position, rotation and color. Something that we used in conjunction with Redshift, a fast third-party renderer that delivers production quality with ease. Plus other features that Cinema has to offer, like deformers, dynamics and sculpting modules, it helps us to add detail as we see fit. In this kind of project, we find out that communication is key. The best way to problem solve is to gather your colleagues and find a solution that best suits the challenge. Hi again, uh, it's me Miguel. As I was saying, I, I was responsible for the look dev of uh, the short. And one of the things that I had to do was the, the fur. So I had to use the hair system and C4D. And it was great to see how open it is because of the way that you mix and add and remove stuff like the curl and the thickness and the length. Our main character, the, the rabbit, he has a lot of uh, big stretches and twistings, like in the arms and ears, and we noticed that the fur was making some strange patterns all over. Um, we asked Maxon for, for their help, because we simply could not understand what was going on, and uh, they suggested some, some, some things that we could try regarding the subdivision surface that we're controlling. So basically, we, we had to create a secondary mesh a higher dense mesh and use the mesh deformer to go and read the animation of the low poly mesh and the hair was was emitting from this higher mesh and the trick was to use the correct subdivision method still we didn't need any special skills or scripts or plugins it was all through the standard tools in cinema 4d so, uh, while doing fur in Cinema 4D is great because you can uh, very quickly get the results that you want and see uh, in the viewport what you're doing, it was really after we started working together with Redshift that we just got blown away uh, with how fast you could see what you're going to get in the render. And for me, since I was making the look dev, these tools together were just, were just perfect for me. Okay. This is it, I hope you liked it. In the next episode, we're gonna talk about animation and how the animators came up with great solutions to meet our visions of the directors. We'll also see some of the technical details of animation, like the rigging, the VFX. So I hope you liked it again. Bye-bye. Ciao.